all right, guys, I'm on kind of a roll evicting some of these locks that have been living in my naughty bucket. I got a new pick that I've had a lot of luck getting into very pair-centric keyways when you have a wide variation in bidding and a really low-cut one in the front. This Vink House is no different. Take a look at this guy. We have, that first pin is very high cut, but look at that second one. I have never got, found a pick where I could reach up this high between that nasty warding to reach those guys in the back. It just, no matter what I did, it would overset that second pin. I've been using this guy. This is the multi-pick. I think it's the PN07. It's a German pick. This Winkhaus obviously is a German lock, so it's designed for those kind of locks. Fine little tip, 22,000, and nice curve, but really narrow Euro-style slimline profile to let you get the tip of that up between the warding. I'm hoping that it's going to be just as successful on this one as it's been on some of the others, particularly that Berg Vector. Let's find out. All right, that ought to hold it. Let's just make sure I didn't pinch anything. Uh, it seems to work okay. All right, same key, same lock. Let's see what we got going here. I'm going to try bottom of the keyway since I can't use that. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to pick from this side and go counterclockwise. That way I can kind of keep my finger out of the camera frame, hopefully. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And what I will do is put a mark, let me tension it, put a mark right here. Uh, can you see that? Probably not with the glare. Let's put another one right. Come on, pen, cooperate. Writing on Chrome is not so easy. One of those hopefully shows up. I can't see them through the camera lens, but uh, anyway, same pick all the way to the rear. I'm going to take and tension it lightly and see what we got. Find that last pin. There's five. Either that or it's the warding. Yeah, that was five. I am able to get up between the warding, but what I'm finding is that I have to angle the pick about up at one o'clock, not straight up and down. I have to angle it off that way for some reason to get around the warding. Kind of odd. But you go with the flow. That was three, kind of crunched into place. This two, he's definitely set. That was five again, give me two little clicks. All right, I just touched one. I got a little count, uh, a little bit of a fault set. I'll take it. That was touched. I just touched, went in, and when I went two, I felt a click, and I got a little more fault set. And I will take that as well. <laughs> I just touched pin three. <laughs> Again, trying to insert the pin, and I got a little deeper fault. Let's keep doing this. Maybe we'll be getting in here pretty quick. No, not that easy. All right, I am on pin three, and I am getting counter rotation. All right, I believe he's a spool, and I think we got him set. That was warding. And there we go. I'll take it. All right, I... Um, Let's take a look at this. Let's pull them out. I have looked at this lock in anticipation of someday getting them open. And when it comes to opening, uh, to gutting it, uh, these are normally some kind of washers with a slit, but these are permanent. There, are, there is no slit 
in any of these. They are intact all the way around. And how they did that, I can't imagine. They must have slid the core in there and then somehow compressed them uh, from the outside. I don't see any compression marks. So when it comes to disassembling this guy, I really don't know how to go about it. So what I am going to do, I do want to see what's in him. I'm going to cut him. I'm going to sacrifice this guy. And that'll give me two locks to give away at the end. But I, since it's my lock and I really want to know what's in him, I'm going to do it. Um, what I will do, let's see here. The side that I picked has YX on it. And it's the shorter of the two sides. The longer side does not have YX. So let's cut it and then I'll bring it back over to the bench and then we'll take it apart. All right, guys, I just cut through this thing, and before it blew up in my hands, I thought it'd be interesting to turn the camera back on. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and hopefully that stays in focus. This is the side, I think. It's got the YX on it, so we're just going to go with him. And let's look at the ring. I don't see any compression on there. I have no idea how they did that. Ah, uh, I see. I do see. Uh, keep that in frame. Uh, if you look, well, I'll even show you on the one that I picked. The ring itself in the center here, come on, focus. There is a compression right there, and there must be one on the other side. So there must be a groove in the core. So once they slide everything together, then from the outside, they pinch that one into the groove, which then prevents its removal. So... I don't see any opening on him either. So how you'd go about getting this guy apart without cutting him open. I think it's a one-way deal. Once they're together, they're together. Now, the next question is, if that's how it happens, how am I going to get that guy open? If he's compressed in there, there's really no way. So what I am going to do... Oh, man. All right. I am going to take my Dremel and cut him right along there, right along there, take this off, and then we'll gut him that way. I'm going to lock him back up, take some of the pressure off so it doesn't launch the whole plate off once I get that cut. All right. I'll be... I got a better idea. I'm going to try just to cut through here. And then perhaps I can pry that ring out. That might be the better way to go. Let's try that. All right, guys, I think I've cut through that little brass band thing. So what I'm going to do is take a probe. Let me zoom in. I'm going to take my probe and then maybe rotate this guy around a little bit. Maybe we can bend him. Well, he's spreading a little bit. There we go. All right, we are in business. This is still, make sure it is still the XY. Come on, focus for me. Still the XY. I do have a key. Move all this junk out of here. Keep the key. Rotate him. And we need a follower. And we need this guy. Make sure we're oriented right. Wow. If this is not a disaster, I can't imagine. Why in the world would they make their locks like that? Make them non-maintainable. There's probably some proprietary, very expensive tool that's designed to take those out of there. But I don't have one. All right, nothing weird about this. I don't see any undercuts or anything like that. All these are standard. Okay, tweezers. 
We got a standard. These better not all be standards. All right, finally, we get a spool. A nice looking spool, too. Another, there we go, T pin. A spool, very different size spool in length. And the last one is standard. That's a lot of destruction to get those pins out of there, let me tell you. All right, I'm not even going to turn these right side up. There's only five of them. All these guys were standards. We had a steel pin in the front, probably some kind of anti-drill. We had a very short spool. I don't know if you can get a good look at that, but see how it's reduced on one end, almost like a serration to get caught up. So it reduced uh, on both ends, but this was the working end. A T-pin, much like you'd find in an acid lock an elongated spool to give you some slightly different feedback, and a standard pin in five. The real secret to this one was that keyway combined with some pretty good bidding. That's what's designed to keep you out of this lock. And it did, but no more. Anyway, guys, all it takes is the right pick, and you find a way in. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your patience. I appreciate no comments about how nasty my guttings are. Anyway... Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. Hold on. Before you leave, click that subscribe button. And while you're there, click that notification bell as well. If you'd like to be a sponsor, click there. And for five bucks a month, you get all kinds of benefits. If that's not enough free stuff, hit the Lock Lab. We've got a self-paced lockpicking course with over a dozen modules at the bottom of the page. Join the tribe. Subscribe.